Ever wonder where those super cool ships come from? Well, shipyards are basically giant workshops, and they're super important. It's where ships get built, tuned up, and patched up if something goes wrong. Doesn't matter if it's an old wooden boat or one of those sleek, modern speed demons. Now, picture this. Out of all the shipyards in the world, there's this one spot totally focused on building ridiculously fast, cutting-edge catamarans. That place? In Cat Tasmania? Down in Derwent Park, Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. So, the Incat Tasmania story goes way back to 1977. It actually started as the Sullivan's Cove Ferry Company. It was a team-up between the founder, a guy named Bob Clifford, and a ship designer, Philip Herkus. At first, they just built four little ferries before starting up international catamarans. But here's where it gets interesting. This partnership cooked up a pretty wild idea, designing the world's first-ever catamaran tough enough to just slice through big waves. Sadly, the Dream Team didn't last, and they went their separate ways in 1988. Clifford decided to rename his operation InCat Tasmania. Herkus, on the other hand, went back to Sydney and started InCat Designs. That company later merged and became InCat Crowther in 2005. Quick heads up, though. InCat Crowther is a totally different beast from InCat Tasmania. The ships they design are built by other yards. InCat Tasmania? They've got their own crew of designers in-house called Revolution Design. In the beginning, Incat mostly built pretty standard boats and ferries. Nothing too out there compared to other shipyards. But what made them stand out was their itch to always be experimenting and trying new stuff. The real Game Changer moment hit in 1990 when they finished Hull 023. Man, this ship was something else. It was Incat's first truly next-gen ferry. Crazy fast, huge, and rocking that unique wave-piercing hull with the pointy center bow everyone recognizes. As one of the first companies building massive aluminum catamarans, Incat definitely played a big part in changing the whole shipping game back in the 90s. So, what kinds of ships do they build? The talented folks over at Incat Tasmania pump out all kinds of awesome vessels. We're talking passenger ferries, both big ones and smaller ones, alongside ships built tough for military duty. They also construct special K-class vessels, support boats designed to help out offshore oil rigs, and even those jaw-droppingly luxurious mega-yachts. Get this, they were even the ones trusted to build the famous Brook Street Pier, that cool floating pontoon structure. Okay, so how do InCat's ships get so darn fast? It boils down to a mix of three key things. Building with aluminum, using that wave-piercing tech, and powering them with water jets. Usually, ships coming out of this yard can stretch up to 426 feet long, weigh around 13,000 gross tons, and hit cruising speeds of up to 58 knots. Which is roughly 67 miles per hour fast, right? Alright, let's peek behind the curtain at how they're made. Everything kicks off once the ship's details and the building contract are all signed off. The design team then jumps on the computers, digitally mapping out the ship exactly as agreed. While that's happening, the production crew at the shipyard is already getting ready to roll in the main construction area. First things first, cutting massive sheets of aluminum. They do this in a huge space, over 43,000 square feet. These plates get cut with laser precision to the exact shapes and sizes needed. There's always a supervisor watching closely to make sure every single cut is spot on before it moves to the next step, which is fabrication. After cutting, the plates head over to the construction hall. This is where the ship's pieces, both big and small, start getting put together beforehand. They call this prefabrication. They build large sections, or modules, then lift and carefully move them into place. Doing it this way means the crew can work faster and smarter, often cutting down the total time it takes to build a ship at InCat. InCat has two gigantic main construction halls. Wilson's and Coverdale's, each stretching about 820 feet. This is the heart of the operation, where their famous high-speed catamarans really come to life. The ship's frame starts taking shape inside these massive buildings. Before they attach the aluminum skin, certain parts get fitted with water jets. These jets are the powerhouse for moving the ship. Get this, each unit can shoot out about 5,544 US gallons of water every single second. Then heavy pieces, like the center bow section weighing around 9.9 .9 short tons, 
are carefully attached to the main structure. Bit by bit you start to see the catamaran take its final form. Once the main body, the hull, is built, it's time for the muscle, installing the enormous engines. Seriously, these things are beasts. Each engine cranks out around 12,000 horsepower. To give you an idea, that's like harnessing the power of 250 family cars. Next up are the finishing touches inside, putting in all the passenger seats, stairs, and everything else that makes it comfortable. But hold on, it's not ready just yet. Before a ship gets delivered to its new owners, these high-speed cats have to go through tough testing out in the ocean, called sea trials. One of the real superstars from InCat Tasmania has got to be InCat Hull 069. The speed on this thing is just wild. It tops out at 58 knots, around 67 miles per hour. Now, it might not be the newest kit on the block, but Hull 069 was the fourth ship InCat built that could cruise at over 50 knots, about 58 miles per hour. And here's the kicker. This ship actually won the Hales Trophy. That's the big prize for the fastest passenger ship to cross the Atlantic three times in a row. How cool is that? The body of Hull 069 is aluminum, held together by that central bow structure up front. Each side or hull is split into nine watertight compartments that also have vents all separated by walls running across. Two compartments on each side are the main fuel tanks. Plus, there's an extra one set aside as a backup tank for really long trips. Building Hull 069 followed the usual in-cat playbook. Started with the design team, got the thumbs up, then the building began. Once the hull was put together, from cutting the metal to framing it out, they installed the powerful turbo engines. Hull 069 runs on 22 megawatt GE gas turbines. That's about 29,500 horsepower. All that power gets funneled through two Wurzela LJX1720SR water jet units. Each one of those can push an incredible 6,000, 336 US gallons of water per second. The payoff? Blazing speed? That's actually pretty decent on the wallet when it comes to upkeep. Another really neat thing about Hull 069 is that it's a dual fuel ship. That means it can burn either liquefied natural gas, LNG, or regular marine diesel fuel. Being flexible like that makes it one of the most fuel efficient ships cruising the seas. On top of carrying 1,024 passengers, this 325-foot-long ship has a huge deck for cars. Enough space for 450 of them. And if that wasn't enough, there's also a duty-free shopping mall on board, covering almost 12,000 square feet. When it was all finished, Hull 069 was snapped up by Buquevas, a ferry company from Argentina. They gave it the name Francisco, as a nod to Pope Francis. For the quick rundown on Hull 069 stats, it measures 325 feet long and 88 feet wide with a draft, how deep it sits in the water, of 9.8 feet. Its dead weight or carrying capacity is 496 short tons. For fuel, it has two main tanks, each holding about 18,480 US gallons plus two LNG tanks, each holding about 10,560 US LNG gallons. It also carries 1,320 U.S. gallons of fresh water. Having INCAT around has definitely been a massive plus for Tasmania's whole maritime scene. But the success of this top-tier shipbuilder isn't just their own doing. They rely on teamwork with local companies, too. Take CBG Systems, for example. Oh, they've been supplying INCAT for over 30 years. CBG specializes in making these super-efficient, lightweight fire protection panels, apparently some of the best in the world. Then there's Liferaft Systems Australia, as else to say. They're practically neighbors with INCAT, also based in Tasmania. LSA's whole deal is making Liferafts for big ships, including the ones INCAT builds. That's why, during those sea trials we talked about, they don't just test the engines and how the ship handles. They also make absolutely sure the safety gear, like the lifer apps, works flawlessly. It's super critical for making sure people can get off safely if, knock on wood, something bad ever happens, like a fire or the ship hitting rocks. 